Hello, this is John Baisley. And I'm Gina. And we are... Baroness. And you're watching... Heavy Consequence! Hey everyone, it's Spencer with Heavy Consequence. I'm here with John and Gina from Baroness. Thanks for being here. No problem, man. We're glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Well, I happened to just see you guys a couple of weeks ago. I live in New York. I saw you play Brooklyn, Coney Island on a very cool tour with Lamb of God, Kill Switch Engage, and Suicide Silence. A really cool bill. And uh, can you talk about uh, maybe being, being on that bill with uh, that eclectic mix of, uh, of bands? Yeah, well, it, it, as you said, it is a pretty eclectic mix. And um, I think when we when we took the tour on and really up till that first show, we didn't quite know what to expect in terms of how that diversity across the bill was going to work out for us. Because I think I think it may come as no surprise that on a bill with Suicide Silence, Kill Switch Engage and Lamb of God, we're we may be the most classic rock. <laughs> I saw somebody online who wasn't they weren't trying to they weren't trying to diss us but they did say we were the softest band on tour and all that aside we've found that the crowd has been actually quite incredible on this tours it's a lot of I mean there are a lot of our fans who come to see the show but there's also more crossover between these four bands than I would have anticipated and so we, I think, uh, I think maybe like three or four days into tour, we realized this crowd is here for the whole show, and they re like they're really receptive to what we're doing. So we started taking the s some of the weirder songs in our set list and trying to instigate circle pits, <laughs> and it's been working like gangbusters, and it's been really, yeah, it's been really fun and cool. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, I. My only complaint was your set was all too short. I was hoping to see you guys a little longer, but it you guys- is, It's way too short. You guys packed a wall up in there, I gotta say. That was a really good set. And one thing I noticed on there was the dynamic between the two of you on, on stage. It really, I mean, it's really like joyous to watch you guys together. And I wanted to know, John, maybe you can speak on what Gina's brought to the band in the five years that she's been with Baroness. And then, ba and then what, like and Gina, you what you can talk about your experience like gelling with the band over the last five years. Well, I mean, it, it's 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 weird. It's weird to get at this ask this question at this point because I think to some some people out there, Gina's a newer member of the band. But after six years with Gina and ten years with Nick and Seb, this has been the most stable and sort of. Uh, consistent and gelled lineup that we've had. So I can only say that when, when Gina joined, uh, way back when, I think there had, I think there can be this strange kind of anticipation when somebody joins a band that some that things are going to get reconfigured in a way where, where something's not as powerful or not as easy or not as natural or consistent. But in fact. What Gina brought to the band, which was really wonderful for us, uh, for the for the other three of us, was just some like some new energy, increasingly uh, difficult uh, technical capabilities for me to keep up with. Uh, but mo most importantly, uh, I think our friendship through this band has created uh, like a like a symbiotic guitar relationship that we have that's really special. And I don't think that it could have just happened with anyone. So Gina, thank you for, for joining the band those years ago. Uh, it's been a real treat to play with Gina every night. We, we Because we don't play as co-musicians uh, necessarily or as performers in service of a song. I think what, what we're, I think what Gina and I like to do is we really like to feel the music and let it flow through us and kind of breathe with it as, as uh, both vocalists and guitar players. And, and I think in such a way that, or in a way that I don't see frequently enough on stages that we're on. So it's, it really warms my heart to hear that you you pick up on that at, by seeing us play, you know? Yeah, I mean, I started off as like a massive fan uh, from Yellow and Green is when I got introduced to the band and I kind of like did all the back catalog. And then when I remember when Purple came out. I was like so stoked. I was like, new color, yeah! <laughs> um, 
so it was a real trip to join a band that you love and appreciate so much so it's like what's a trip to get to play with john initially like learning all the songs was like a blast so i was like i love this part i love this part this is awesome like um and then i think like through the process of creating gold and gray like together brought us all really close together and like i feel like i'm just every night playing with my best friend playing with my three best friends on stage and it's just like feels like a family and I didn't know what to anticipate going into the situation, but I couldn't have asked for a better outcome because it's just like a blast and I, I really don't take it for granted. Like I really appreciate like kind of what we all have like on and off stage or in and out of the studio or whatever it is like, or feels like everybody genuinely really cares about each other. And so, yeah, it's, it's fucking rad. Yeah. And uh, you know, you mentioned like when you were a fan, you were like, oh, new color, new album. Yeah. But uh, John, you mentioned that, you know, uh, Golden Great kind of completed that color wheel. And it, it was, as I understood it, it marked the end to that chromatically themed album. Is it, is it safe to say that maybe a new theme will come in ensuing albums? Or are you just going to do like rudimentary album uh, titles like like uh, Baroness Rocks or <laughs> Come Get Us? That'd be so funny if you guys came out like with these really like, yeah. What's cracking? What's cracking Baroness? <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh, no, I, uh, if there's a new theme coming or if uh, it's going to be kind of singular album titles from now on. Yeah, it'll be one of those. <laughs> it'll be one of those things you mentioned. Yeah, no. Uh, no, as, as you may uh, as you may know, we we keep uh, we keep the the themes and the that kind of stuff uh, a little, somewhat under wraps. And I will say that the answer to that question will come relatively soon. Ah, uh, you know, it has been a few years since Golden Gray, and I just uh, was wondering about a timeline on the next one. But I think you're just about the well, we finally have a timeline on the <laughs> okay. new one, which is which is which is great. You know, the pandemic was not the easiest time for a band like Baroness to write music, uh, being that our music is very definitely the direct chemistry of the musicians playing, more so now than it ever has been. Uh, so, it, you know, throughout that little blank period in history, uh, we figured out a way to get together uh, and we figured out a way to make the best of it. And the net result of those those processes is coming out um, relatively soon. Uh, very cool to hear. And uh, John, obviously you're a very talented visual artist too. You painted the Baroness co album covers. I wanted to ask you, how does your music inform your artwork and how does your artwork inform your music? There, it's to, so the the two are at this point in my life are so closely interwoven that I don't know what the difference is between them other than you know one th the the output of one thing is uh, you know a, a two dimensional thing that you witness with your eyes the other thing is a stereo thing that you hear with your ears beyond those those huge differences but beyond beyond those the the genesis and the the sort of inspiration and the drive the motivating factors that come together to put those things to, to put you know to make those things happen is exactly the same you know it's just a, i have a creative impulse i see a vacuum i see an emptiness and i need to fill it with sound and light and music and and feeling and emotion uh, because I'm one of those people that just hates a blank space and whether that's due to like my anxieties or just like the you know the real need to find a place to be creative who cares you know it's just it comes from the same place I think I think all of us who are creative people we can approach each um, facet of our lives with that kind of creativity and therefore and therefore make everything in some ways a musical experience very cool. And Gina, I have one for you. You you had some cool gigs before, Baroness. You were in Cirque du Soleil. You were, you were in a Metallica cover band, Miss Metallica, an all-female Metallica cover band. And I wanted to know a couple of things, like how was it channeling your inner James Hetfield? And how did that prepare you? Because, you know, obviously one of the greatest metal bands of all time. Uh, 
And how did that prepare you for like going into a band like Baroness? Yeah, in like high school and the first two years I did college, uh, did that. And I think the, the big takeaway was I kind of learned how to play, and, play guitar and, and sing at the same time. So that was a valuable skill, <laughs> like joining Baroness, because uh, some of those parts are kind of all over the place. They're so hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that YouTube that of you uh, killing it on Master of Puppets. It was like, it was really great. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs>